I'd like to provide you a little, a little video help for what's going to probably be one of the toughest exercises that we do in this entire unit. That is, how to predict the protonation and charge of an amino acid at any particular pH. Let's give you a couple of examples. Here's the amino acid serine, and here's aspartate. Let's say I asked you to do these at a particular pH. Uh, we'll put the pHs down in a minute. Uh, first of all, let me go through and tell you the general procedure. First, you're going to write out the amino acid in the full structure with all of the protons you can on it. Uh, that is, the, you're going to protonate carboxylic acids and protonate amines and make sure that everywhere you can put a proton, you have it. The second thing we have to do is assign pKa values. Now remember, there were some general pKa values that I asked you to learn. I asked this of the folks on Friday, so if you're still uh, in group two and haven't come in on Monday yet, you may not have seen this yet. But carboxylic acids, we say, are generally two to five. Amines, eight to 11, and primary and secondary alcohols have pKa values greater than 20. I want you to know those ranges. But here's the interesting thing. That is not good enough for what we need to do in this. We need the exact pKa's. You don't have to memorize them, so what we do is we go find them in the book. Here is a table that's very similar to the one in your book, if not the same. It's close enough. And what we have is a list of the amino acids, and we have three columns here. The pKa for the carboxylic acid. Every amino acid has one of those. pKa for the alpha amino group. Every amino acid has one of those. And the pKa for side chains. Notice there's only seven of those that have pKa's. Let's start with serine. Serine is right here, and it only has pKa values for the carboxylic acid and the amine, 2.2 and 9.2. There is no side chain pKa. So let's go back and take a peek at that and put those down. The pKa of the carboxylic acid we said was 2.2. Fits in the range, but now we have an exact value. The amine, 9.2. Again, in the range, but uh, exact value is now provided. We're not given in the chart a pKa for the side chain because it's greater than 20 and we can never achieve greater than 20 in water. You can only go up to 14. Okay, let's do the same for aspartate and we'll go back and take a quick peek here. Aspartate is way up there at the top, aspartic acid. We're going to have to look at all three columns now, though, because aspartic acid has a side chain that can actually have a deprotonation or protonation event. So we have 2.1, 9.8, and 3.9. I'll just round those off. 2.1, 9.8, and 3.9. See if I can remember those. 2.1, 9.8, and 3.8. Okay, let's go to uh, our assignment. Let's consider that we want to do serine at pH, let's say 10. And let's do aspartate. Uh, the assignment will be pH 3. Now, the beauty of this is there's something else I taught you on Friday. And again, Monday, folks, uh, group two, you'll see that on Monday. But here it is on the next page. It's a very simple little chart. And that is you can compare the pH to e the pKa value for each of the particular functional groups that you have. If the pH is greater than the pKa, that is on the basic side, the base to acid ratio will be greater than 1, and it will be in the basic form, or deprotonated. That comes from the Henderson-Hasselbach. If the pH is less than the pKa, or greater, uh, sorry, or more acidic than the pKa, the base to acid ratio will be less than 1, and it will be in the acidic form and protonated. Very simple. If you remember that, 
we can't go wrong. Let's go back and sort this all out. All we need to do is to say, what's the pKa? I seem to have lost my assignments there. Let's do it again. PKA, uh, pH 10 and pH 3.0. How do we do this? We simply compare each functional group. Let's go ahead and start with the alpha carbon. And we're going to have the amine and the carboxylic acid and the side chain over here, which in this case is just an OH. So let's do the comparison. We have a pKa of 9.2 and a pH of 10. That means the pH is on the basic side of 9.2. That means the amine has to be in the basic form, and that's going to be NH2, and that's neutral, so we'll leave it as it is. Notice the pH of 10 is higher than the pKa of 2.2 as well. That means the carboxylic acid has to be in the basic or deprotonated form. In this case, though, it's going to be charged, negative. Now, normally, we would write an H on there. Um, I'm going to give you a hint about drawing these in Marvin Sketch on the homework. Leave the H's off for this uh, special hydrogen right there. Just don't put it on there. It's implicit. It's thought to be there. You have to put H's um, in other places uh, where you're protonating or not. But you do that by putting charges up or down rather than drawing H's. You don't need to draw any H's in this homework. So that's the structure of serine at pH 10. Let's go on to aspartate. Again, we'll go ahead and draw out the core structure. And we'll leave off charges and H's for a second here. Let's go ahead and compare the pH of 3 to 9.8. 3 is on the acidic side or lower than 9.8. That means it needs to be in the protonated form. That means protonated amine, NH3+. plus. Okay, here's the real interesting part. Here's the two carboxylic acids. 3 compared to 2.1 is going to be more basic for the pH. That means we need to put this one in the basic form, in the deprotonated form. But notice that this pKa out here, 3.8, is actually uh, different than this pKa. 3.0 for pH is lower, or on the acidic side of this pKa, 3.8. Therefore, this functional group out here, this carboxylic acid, has to be in the protonated and acidic form. So this is the structure of aspartate at pH 3. Notice that uh, we have two same functional groups, two carboxylic acids, and they have different protonation states. That's possible because they have different pKa's. That's why you need to know the exact pKa, because it makes a big difference when they're very close like that to the pH. So. That's how we do this type of homework. It's a tough one, and then we throw on top of that having you do it with Marvin Sketch. But let me say it again. Draw the amino acid out, and don't draw any hydrogens. If you want to add protons or take them away, use the charge up and down button, and the, the H's will come automatically. That's going to help uh, get through this tough homework assignment.